Making your business more predictable starts and ends with your standard operating procedures, or SOPs. If you don't have effective processes mapped out to guide the way that your business operates, then everyone just kind of does their own thing. That means that critical steps will get missed and your people will get bogged down in just trying to figure out what they should be working on when really you just want your people focused on doing their best work possible. So your processes are essential for keeping your business running like a well-oiled machine. And in this lesson, we're going to create our first process. First, we'll cover what needs a process and which processes should you create first in your business. Then I'll show you how to create your first process in Process Kit and which steps should you include in your process. Then we'll add details to each step and figure out how much detail is too much. Finally, we'll need to decide who should be responsible for each step in the process. All right, so what needs a process? Well, ultimately, any work in your business that happens repeatedly should be documented in a process so that this work gets done in a consistent, predictable way. But you certainly don't need a process documented for everything in your business and definitely not from day one. Okay, so then which processes should you create first? Well, take a minute to think about your business and think about all the work that's happening repeatedly in your operation right now. Usually there are multiple instances of this type of repeatable work that's happening. I'll tell you what some of the most common ones are for people who are using Process Kit. We're seeing new client onboarding, sales proposals, blog article publishing, podcast episode production, employee onboarding, marketing campaigns, and client deliverables. Now of those, new client onboarding is probably the most common repeatable process that we see. So if you're in client services, then you probably have a pipeline of new clients who are, who are coming on board, they're getting set up for your team to begin delivering services to them. So that's the process that we're going to create today and we're going to build on this new client onboarding process throughout the rest of the lessons in this course. All right, I'm in my process kit account and I'm gonna to go to the main navigation and click on processes. Then I'm going to create our first process. Now I'm gonna give it a title, you know, something simple, but it should clearly describe what this process is for. So we're gonna call this process new client onboarding. And click create process. So which steps should you include in your process? You might be wondering what should actually be a step? Should you take a bunch of steps and combine them into one? Are you adding too many steps? Too few? A good rule of thumb is to create a step in the process for every item that you wanna be able to confirm gets done each and every time. In other words, these steps will ultimately become tasks that someone can check off in their to-do list. But we'll get to tasks later. For now, we're just building out the process with these key steps. Now don't worry about adding images or videos or details. We'll get to all that stuff in just a minute. But for now, we're just adding the key steps and their titles to this process. Okay, let's fill in the title for our first step in our new client onboarding process. Now you'll probably want to confirm that payment from the client has been received and that the contract has been signed. So let's make that our first step. Now we can click save and add another to move right into adding our next step in the process. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few more key steps to this process just by typing in their titles, saving, and then adding the next one. And when I'm finished, I can pull this down and just click save and finish. All right, now that we've got the key steps in our process, let's go back and fill in some of the details. Now, most of these steps should include clear instructions on how to perform this task effectively. You wanna give whoever would be doing this work everything that they would need in order to be successful. But you don't wanna overload them with too much information. That would just be overwhelming and it would result in people not even following the instructions. So keep it clear, concise, and easy for someone to use. Now it's a good idea to include a combination of text, images, and video. Text and images are good because it makes it easier for the person to scan the process and find the thing that they're looking for quickly. Now videos can be helpful when the work is a little bit more technical and involved. 
But my tip here is to keep your videos very short and focused because that'll make it easier to maintain those videos when things change and it'll be quicker and easier for your team to consume them. Loom is my favorite tool for quickly capturing screencast videos that you can embed right into your process, uh, but YouTube or other embeddable videos would work just fine as well. Now don't feel like you need to fill in every single detail for every single step right now at the start. In fact, you shouldn't. You wanna add details slowly over time as you and your team learn what the most effective way of carrying out each task really is. So just filling in a few key details for now is a great start. All right, let's start adding details to a few of these steps. So I'm going to open up this first step and click on add a description. And this is where we can add detailed instructions on how to perform this step. So I already have some text prepared here, so I'm just gonna paste that right in. And of course you can uh, do all sorts of formatting in here like, like bold or italic. You can have bullet lists or numbered lists. You can make things link just like that by adding a URL, or you can even just type in like that and it would automatically link as, as long as it's actually a URL. Now I have an image on my desktop. I'm gonna drag this image right in. And we can give this image a caption. And when we're finished, we can click update. Okay, so we've added some details to that first step. Now let's go add some details to another step. And this time let's also include an embedded video. So I'm going to add a description to this one. And I've got some text prepared for this as well. And like I said, I really like to use the free tool Loom for capturing quick focused screencast videos that I can embed anywhere, including embedding in process kit. So I'm gonna show you how to do this now. And of course you could follow a very similar process using YouTube or any other embedded video. But I have this uh, Loom video that I've already recorded. And inside Loom, you can go to share and go to embed. And I'm gonna actually choose fixed size and set it to 800 so that it, it'll it fit the, the full width of the step in process kit. And then of course process kit would, you know, scale it down if you're viewing it on mobile. So I'm going to copy that code and then go back to process kit. And we're gonna click this video icon here. And here we can paste that embed code and I'll click insert. And it just embedded the playable Loom video. Like I said, you know, you could do this with any video that can be embedded like YouTube or Vimeo or anything else. So we're gonna click update. And now this step has a video built into it. Great. So I'm gonna close these up. Now you can go ahead and add just a few key details to some of these steps. But as I said, it's a good idea to just you know, gradually add a little bit more detail over time. You don't need to do it all at once from the beginning. Now, before we wrap up this first lesson, let's see if it makes sense to start assigning team members here at the process level, or if we should wait until later when this process turns into real tasks. Now, there might be some steps, maybe all of the steps in this process, where you know exactly who on your team should be responsible each time. And if that's the case, then it does make sense to assign that person to these steps here at the process level, because that would reduce a lot more work for you later on. Now, I have already invited a few of my team members into Process Kit, and I did that over in the People section. And so now here in my process, I can start assigning some of those people to those steps where I know exactly who will be responsible each time. So let's open up this one. All right, in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you how to actually use this process to power real-time tasks.